Hello and welcome to another shoot film episode. This time I'm shooting from my kitchen. This is my uh, kitchen. I don't have a tripod yet, so the fridge is gonna be my tripod for now. Uh, <laughs> I'm really excited about this episode. I shot uh, this camera. This is a Yashica A. I'm gonna give my uh, impressions about this camera at the end of the video, but um, here's the thing. I just uh, Fran and I just moved into the US, so I have almost nothing from my original darkroom equipment. So when I purchased this camera, I knew I was in trouble because I have to... Uh, well, I brought my dark bag and uh, my developing tank and my... and this thing, the uh, thermometer. So I bought my changing bag and I bought this in Chile, it's my first uh, developing tank so I didn't have the heart to leave it in the UK and this thermometer is really good so I brought these three things uh, so I don't have to start everything anew but aside from this all the other stuff is uh, I have to purchase it in here and that poses a problem because I need to develop the film and I need to scan it so I purchased a scanner and I'll show it to you in a few minutes the issue is I need to develop the role that I took for this episode um, and I was lucky enough to be approached by the guys at CineStill and then send me this. This is a box which I already opened uh, <laughs> and inside the box is this thing. This, oh, it's still on wrapping paper. This thing, it's the CineStill DF96. It's kind of shiny, I'm, I'm trying to avoid the shiny thing maybe here okay so this thing is a CineStill DF96 and it's a mono bath developer which means it's a developer and a fixer in the same thing uh, I think it looks interesting and it, it's an interesting concept and I really want to try it so I'm gonna give it a try on this episode I'm really excited this camera is really interesting it looks like a Rolleiflex and it feels like a Rolleiflex Ugh. and it <laughs> <laughs> and it feels like a Rolleiflex 3.5 um, yeah it feels like a Rolleiflex 3.5 and the lens is a 3.5 70? no it's an 83.5 so it's yeah it's almost the same um, I shot this episode here in New York and I'm, I'm I don't know man there's so much new stuff happening I'm sorry if this video uh, and the last videos are kind of all over the place but there's so much stuff happening I could easily make a video only about the camera I could easily make a video only about shooting outside and I could easily make a video only about this developer but I think I'm just uh, try everything uh, at once and see how it looks like I'm gonna give it a try with this developer uh, I'm not gonna make a review on this developer yet I need to try it a little bit more and once I've tried it with a few more rolls, I can give you my impressions. But those are the things that I'm going to use now. Can you talk at the camera just to make sure the microphone's working? Okay, so hello, hello, hello. I am talking to a camera. This is a test of the microphone. Hello, hello. Cool. Is it good? Okay, we're good. You good? Okay, hello. I am today with Kyle. Hi, Kyle. Hey, guys. <laughs> Jacob is uh, recording. Hi, Jacob. <laughs> so these two amazing guys are going to help me out because, I mean, Jacob offered to help me out with a video so I of course I said yes and we are here in New York and we're at the Hudson River actually yes okay yeah. very good so these guys know what they're talking <laughs> about I have no clue so today we're gonna try this camera this is a Yashica A uh, I have not tried this camera I have no idea this is the first time that I have it in my hands and I'm going to shoot with some Aylford HP5 Plus uh, and take some pictures of Kyle around the area we're gonna take some pictures I guess around here and then just move and if we find something interesting that will be good I don't know we're just gonna play by ear and yeah follow us
right to the border. Can you look over here? Yeah. Let's see. This is the Yashica A. I really enjoyed using this camera. It's an interesting camera. I always say it's interesting. Let me find another uh, way to describe it. It's a fine camera. It's an entertaining to use camera. <laughs> um, it has a lot of the features that the Rolleiflex has in the same package. Uh, do I have... Hold on, I'm gonna go get my Rolleiflex for a second. All right, I'm back. If you look at them side by side, they're more or less the same. 
Uh, of course, since the lens is bigger on the Rolleiflex 2.8e, the uh, camera will be bigger. I purchased this and I was not expecting much from it. Uh, I just wanted to try a TLR on the channel and I really wanted to give a TLR to my patrons. So that's the reason why I purchased this. Uh, and I found it has a lot of interesting things and very cool things happening and there's some other things that I'm not a really big fan of so I'll go through all the features that you can find on this camera uh, first off the shutter the shutter is very lovely it's a really cool you just cock it and take the picture and that's it uh, you cock it and you have to choose between bulb mode, 25, 50, 100, and 300 of a second. You have a lot of options and you can take multiple exposures. You can take a thousand exposures if you so desire. So that's pretty good. It's really easy, just cock it and shoot. Um, if you're used to this, I'm pretty used to this kind of shutter, so it's it's nothing terrible. You won't forget that you have it over there. Uh, it's really easy. The aperture goes all the way from 3.5 to f22, and it's really easy. Just slide this and you're set. Uh, it's the same with the shutter. You just cock it here. And the shutter speed, you just move the ring and you can change the shutter speed. And those are all the operations that you need to know. Nothing really too hard. Once you load your film, as you saw in the video, you have to see over here where the first frame is. So you load your film and then you wind it, wind it, wind it. And then at some point you will see a number one. That's that you're in the first frame. Then you can just close this, take your picture. And to move to the next picture, just open here and move it move it move it just wind it until you see a number two and just keep going until you reach the end uh it's pretty simple it's not an automatic camera it's not that like the rolling flick i'm not gonna do it because i have a rolling here but once you take a picture you just move here and just crank it and you pass to the next one which is automatic and it's not the same with the yashica so uh that's a that's a difference it's not a big difference it's not something that will say oh my god it's a deal breaker but um I don't know, I'm, I guess I'm just used to this because I have other medium format cameras that have the same thing. The Mamiya 6 operates the same way. There's like a viewing window over here that you gotta be attentive to. So it's, I don't know, it's, I, I'm, I'm super used to this kind of operations. But there's one thing that really makes a difference between the Rolleiflex and the Mamiya and it's the focusing mechanism. Did you notice anything strange? Yep, the focusing mechanism here is on the right and on the Rolleiflex is on the left. What that entails is the focusing mechanism on the Rolleiflex is on the left. So I just focus with my left hand and I take the pictures with my right hand. So that's the easiest way I could find. I just look through the viewfinder and I was like, okay, that's like, all right. And I just press it. So everything is over here. Just move the controls with my thumbs and I just take the picture with this finger and I focus with my other hand. So my hands are constantly on the camera. Both hands are being used. On the Yashica, uh, the big difference is that my left hand is pretty much completely useless. I can use it to just open or close the viewfinder, but that's all I can do. Uh, the focusing mechanism is on the right and the shutter is on the right. Um, I would say maybe the aperture mechanism can be modified with my left hand, but you gotta look at it anyway, so you have to do this to change the whole things or look it from the front, which is what I was doing. So it's not a big difference. Like I was operating all the time with the right hand, just deciding the aperture and then moving the ring to the shutter speed and then cocking the shutter and then taking the pictures. So since the whole thing is on your right hand, it feels, um, it's different to operate. I wouldn't say it's super uncomfortable because it's not, that would be a lie. But you have to do this movement. You focus the image and then when you find something interesting, you lower your hand and you cock the shutter and you take the picture. The other option will be to have the shutter already cocked and you just focus, focus, focus. Oh, I found it. And then you take the picture. Um, and then of course you have to wind it, which is also at the right side of the camera. So all the main controls are on your right side. Aside from that, it's, it's a really simple camera really. You just, if you wanna open it, you just move it to this side and then you open it, you load your film and then to close it, you just close it like so and wind it to the other side and you're set, your camera is closed. Uh, you have a magnification over here, which I used all the time for every single shot. I just, uh, I'm focusing and to make sure I just lift the magnification, decide the focus is correct and then I lower it and take the picture. That's how I used it. 
And that's pretty much it. It came with this lens covers and yeah, that's it. It's a simple camera. It's a TLR, it's manual. It doesn't have a light meter, which means you'll have to use an external app. A lot of people ask me which app do I use for uh, measuring the light. I use different apps, but uh, right now I'm using uh, one called AS Light Meter, which is free and you can download it. So that's what I use and all the images were just measured with that. I measure the, what I usually do is I measure the skin tones of the subject and that's what I do. Some people ask me, hey, do you measure for the shadows or the highlights? And my answer always is I don't, I don't measure for highlights or shadows. I really don't care about the overall image, um, like the overall exposure because I'm not taking a picture of a landscape. What I'm doing is taking a picture of somebody, like a person. And what I want to do is I want to make sure that their skin tone is spot on. All the rest, I, I really don't care. As long as the main subject is rightly illuminated and it's like the exposition is on point on that person, all the rest is fine. Man, I'm sweating. This is, this is so hot right now. You have no idea. I've never experienced <laughs> this in my life. It's so hot. I have the AC off, the air conditioner. It's off because otherwise the sound will be messed up. But man, this is hot. Um, yeah, that was my experience with the Yashica A. Would I recommend it? Yes, I highly recommend it. If I didn't have a Rolleiflex and I was looking for a TLR, this will be a very, very good option. If you have any other recommendations about TLRs that I should try and are not on a really high budget, meaning I could actually purchase them and try them and then give them to my patrons, please send recommendations my way. I found this one and so far it's been amazing. It's a great camera, it's a great tool and I will highly recommend that if you're looking for a TLR. I hope you enjoyed this episode. I'm gonna make a review about the uh, developer the Cinestill DF96, I think it's called. Man, I'm the worst at these things. I'm gonna make a review on the developer anyway. Not now, I need to develop at least a few more roles. Let's say at least four, so I get a better grasp of how it behaves with time and how fast it degrades and whatnot. Uh, but for now, like my first experience with it, it was amazing, like three minutes and just washing, which was, I guess, another two minutes of washing. So I had a whole roll developed in five minutes from beginning to end. Man, that's magic. Uh, that was a really good experience. So I'm gonna keep experimenting with that and I'll give you my full report in a few uh, days, I guess in one or two weeks or so. I wanna thank, as always, a lot to my patrons because they help me from the channel. And this camera is going to one of them. I make a raffle every single month. So this is this month's camera's raffle. Uh, which will go to one of my Leica patrons and yeah, that's what I wanted to say. Thank you so much for your support and for being here and everything and I will see you next week with another episode. So until then, just keep shooting guys. I still don't have a desk, so this is my current setup. Can you see it? It's so amazing. This is the AC box that I'm using as a desk. This is the scanner. I purchased an Epson Perfection V700 and it came with a nice dust cover, so I keep it like that. I'm not keeping this all the time, but I just scanned the images that you saw on the episode. So yeah, this is my setup. It's my super professional setup that I'm using uh, at the moment. The furniture, I'm gonna have a desk, but it will arrive on Sunday. So this is my current office. Nice couch and some nice boxes. Pretty cool.